Hello, hello, good afternoon. It's Monica from Life is Art, and we are joining you for the 3.30 p.m. demo Friday of our Harvest of Smiles online crop. And today in our demo, we're going to be looking at the Say It With Style um, special uh, that we're having for National, uh, National Stamping Month. And um, so as part of that special, there are four different workshops. There are stamps and stencils, lots of fun things. So we're going to look specifically at the You Go Girl card making workshop. And we're going to be working on project number four. And so um, let me just show you the stamp set that comes with that workshop. And it's this one here that says, You Go Girl, and it's got lots of gorgeous stamps, um, sentiments in it. And um, a lot of the, pretty much all four workshops are heavy on the sentiments because the, the uh, special is called Say It With Style. So in here we've got Sending You Some Good Vibes, You've Totally Got This, You Go Girl, Darling, You Are All Kinds of Amazing, awesome you're a whole lot of awesome you can also get these with thin cuts you don't have to buy the whole workshop kits you can buy individual bits and pieces that you like or you can get a bit of a discount by buying the workshops or you can purchase all the workshops as one full bundle and that gives you the biggest discount on the workshops so lots of choices there and then there's also two different stencils that come with these bundles and they are card front stencils and there's one that's called quadrant stencils and one that's plaid and inside each pack there are actually four stencils so there's two slimline and two standard and same for the plaid one two slimline two standard and um, gives you lots of variety of things you can do the quadrant one I think was my favorite although I love plaid um, and you will see that in action today so I'm going to put aside my plaid one. So we're going to use the quadrant card front stencils. And if you're joining me live, you can say hello or howdy so I know you're here. Feel free to comment anytime and I'll try to catch any questions you might have as we're going along. And if you're watching later on replay, you can just say replay so I know that you stop by and watch the video. Hey Joanne, nice to see you're watching. Hello, hello. And um, so we're going to get a little messy today. So I have my Versamat here because it's a nice surface to work on. But I'm also going to be pulling in my all-purpose mat because when I'm doing stenciling, um, it tends to get a little messy. I was doing some stenciling earlier during chat and craft on the Zoom session, and I turned my, all my fingers blue because <laughs> my stamp chamois eventually got a lot of ink in it. And so um, my nail polish matched my hands. <laughs> so I was turning Smurf. Um, but that's okay, because there's water and it washes off. <laughs> so we're going to get started today first with um, a piece of the card front. And so this is a piece of white daisy that has been cut to, let me give you the measurement, seven and a quarter by two and a quarter. And what I want to do, actually, I should roll this right out of the way for a second. I want to do a little bit of masking on here. So I'm going to line it up on my Versamat so it's following the lines. And then I'm going to grab a piece of any kind of washi tape, preferably the kind you don't like, you know, with the pattern that you don't like. I don't mind this one, but it's nice and wide, so that helps. And also when it's not too sticky because we're going to mask part of this, and we don't want it to tear our paper um, when we go to take it off. Now, the other thing you can do to keep it from tearing is that you can take this and you can pounce it on your shirt or your pants, and that will kind of pick up a little bit of lint and stuff. It'll still stick. I'm going to give it about eight pounces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it'll still stick but it won't stick as much and hopefully won't tear the paper if it's got a lot of adhesive on it. 
So I'm going to line it up about halfway. This is a two and a quarter, so I'm putting it about one and an eighth all the way across my card. So I'm dividing my card in half, and then um, I'm going to lift that up. The other thing that this does, because I let the masking hang over the edges, is now I can stick it to my um, all-purpose mat, although it doesn't stick terribly well to the all-purpose mat because the all-purpose mat is kind of a non-stick type thing, but it will hold it in place while we're doing our stenciling. And so if you like your paper being held in place, um, that's a good way to do it. Now I'm going to pull out the um, slimline stencils for this, and you will see uh, that I've got a couple of um, numbers marked on here. So I've got one and two, and then I flip them over and I marked three and four. And that's going to help me to be able to create an interesting pattern. So um, when they came out of the package, they lined up with each other really nicely. And I just kind of did a, um, a hold up to the light. And I could see, you could actually kind of see the outline of the other pattern on there. And then I flipped the patterns over. And I could kind of see how they were all going to line up. It's going to look random, but every section of the quadrants will be filled. Okay? So I like, th this was actually my favorite stencil from the collection, this quadrant one. So we're going to start with the, the one that's numbered one. And I'm going to have the, every time I put a number down, it's going to be in this upper right corner. So we've got number one. <clears throat> and I'm going to just line it up here. So that this first um, quadrant is right in the corner. And it will actually give me two rows of the quadrants here. So I'm just kind of lining it up so I can get both rows on there. And um, I could tape this down if I wanted to. But I'm just going to hold it with my hand. And because I'm going to hold it with my hand, I'm going to need a little help with my ink pad. So I'm going to put down my little gripper hair that my mom gave me. And I'm going to bring in the papaya ink, and I'm following the instructions. So these specials have downloadable um, guides that you can use. So I, I downloaded the guide, and I'm using the instructions for project number four for this one. Hey, Kimberly, nice to see you're watching. So this one calls for papaya and harbor ink, and I've got my blending brushes here. So I'm going to start first with the papaya. And we're just going to go ahead and do some inky inky with the blending brushes. And I find that the blending brushes do such a lovely job of inking with a stencil because the little bristles can get into all the little nooks and crannies and you get really nice coverage. You can do as light or as dark as you want. And it's, it's not a hard task to do. So there's all number one everything that was touching in that space. Now I'm going to just set that aside for a minute and we'll wash the stencils together in a moment. Now I'm going to bring in Harbor and I'm going to bring in the other stencil where I've marked number two. And so this is a good tip when you're using these kinds of layering stencils is to use a Sharpie and mark them up so that you know, okay, the number two is going to be upright facing me and I'm going to turn it and um, so this stencil, when I had it laying down here, was the edge, the top edge, the very first quadrant was right at the top edge. So I'm going to make sure that this stencil is about in the same place. Make sure that we've got two rows of quadrants on there. And you can kind of match up ones that are side by side to make sure that you've got it in the right spot. I'm going to shift mine a little bit until you just get it where you want it, okay? And But that number two is in that top corner. And then we can go ahead with our harbor ink and add some blue onto our stencil or through our stencil. It does get on the stencil. That's why we're going to have to wash it in a second. Once we're done this layer, we're going to have to wash these two because we're going to flip them over 
to do the next two layers of inking. So again, you can do as light or as dark as you want. This Harbor ink is pretty dark, but it takes a minute to get it to the dark, dark color with the blending brush. So you can keep going until you're happy with the tone of ink that you want. And just working my way down the stencil. You can see why I had blue fingers when I was done because I hold the stencil down. So there were times when I was just sticking my fingers right in the ink on the stencil. <laughs> it just is what it is. That's how I roll. There's water in the sink and soap, so I just washed it off later. Hey, Carol. Nice to see you found us. Yep, you just got to keep going back to the group every time. Go to the group and you'll find us. So there we go. We've done our second layer. And you can see how fun these quadrants are going to turn, turn out. So I'm going to scooch that out of the way because we're going to alternate the colors. But I need to wash my stencils now because we have used one and two. And then we're going to have to flip it for three and four. So I'm going to use my stamp chamois just to quickly wash it here. You could take it to the sink and wash it, but um, when we're working in the craft room, it can sometimes be a little bit easier just to wipe it with stamp chamois. And then I also like to come in with um, something dry to dry my stencil so that when I go to use it, I'm not getting any water in weird places. Now let's go ahead and we'll wash this one as well. Oops, that's on the other side. <laughs> Trying to wash something that's not even dirty yet. It was the wrong side. And there we go. I always find you got to kind of flip it back and forth because as you're washing, you're pushing wetness through to the other side. And then sometimes it's even easier to pick it up and just get the last little drips off of there. Give this a dry, give this a dry. And depending on the kinds of inks that you're using, um, reds especially will stain your stencils. It's just going to happen. Don't freak out. It's going to happen. <laughs> but um, yeah, you just have to live with it. It gets easier to see the stencil the more ink you get st stuck on there, right? So now we're going to flip. So this was number one. We're going to flip it over and we've got number three. So now we can go ahead and line this one up and it will just take a second. You're going to make sure that you've got, you know, your first two rows of quadrants and you can see that this is lining up and filling in spaces that don't have ink on it yet. So there we go. And we're going back to the papaya. So grabbing our other blending brush and just layering that on. I find the papaya goes on a lot quicker than the harbor <laughs> because the harbor is such a deep color. You really got to get it in there. And there we go. Lovely. And you can use any colors you want. Okay. These are the colors that they used for the workshop. So that's why I'm following it. Um, but you know, you can, you can suit yourself on colors. Now we'll give this a rinse off as well because we're going to use it again later for another step. So we'll give it a little wipe and then it can be drying off to the side while we work. There we go. It doesn't take a lot to wash off the stencils. It's really quick and easy when you're using ink. It's when you're using texture paste and things that um, it gets a little harder to wash the stencils. So now this was number two, and if we flip it over, we've got number four, again, upright in this corner, and we're going to line up our stencils again on top, making sure we're filling in all the available gaps, and switching back to the Harbor ink, like so. And you may wonder, like, why did they bother making it so that you could do four layers? Um, well, it's because you could use four different colors. Now, in this instance, we're only using two, 
but you totally could use four different colors. You could even use four different strengths of the same color if you wanted a monochromatic look, right? So it's not necessarily that, oh, you could have just used two, but um, it's to give you more options, right? We like options. Variety is the spice of life, they say. So let's go ahead and fill these last couple in like so. Now, when I was working from the workshop before I figured out what I was doing, I was having a little bit of trouble figuring out, okay, which, which way they want me to put the stencil and all that. But it was because I was working off of, um, I was working off of a picture. And so it just takes a while for your brain to wrap around. Okay, I need to go this way, then this way, <laughs> then this way. And, you know, my brain doesn't kick in so fast as it should sometimes. So once you get it and once you've marked it, and it'll be super simple. And then give that a bit of a dry. So we're going to use again. In fact, I probably didn't need to wash that one because I'm going to use that layer four again in a minute. But we'll, we'll, we'll wash it anyway. Okay, so now we can go ahead and remove our mask and do the little reveal. And hopefully we don't take any of our cardstock off with it. There we go. Looks good. Easy peasy. And so there is the fun quadrant stencil that we have done using our papaya and harbor. Okay, so we're going to set that aside. And I'll just make sure I've got all that cleaned up a bit. There we go. Now, we're going to do some more stenciling. But wait, there's more. <laughs> so I have here the um the the base layer of the front of our card and it's a piece of harbor that's um eight and a half by three and a half and i've already done some inking on here with the stencil i've done layer one and layer two but in this instance we're just doing tone on tone so we're only using harbor now hopefully i didn't um turn it around too much i'm just going to check here to make sure that I have, yes, okay, so that's the right way. So this was layer one, then we did layer two, like that, and then we're going to go back to this one and we're going to do layer three. Now we're only really having to do the outside edge. So what you do is that you're basically gonna center this over top of your cardstock and I find it's a little bit hard to see everything under my bright lights <laughs> but that looks pretty good and we're only doing the, just the outside edge because that's all we need for this particular piece so I've got my harbor ink here and my blending brush and we're just going to add in our layer three and I did those first two layers ahead of time because I find doing the tone on tone um, I feel like I need to do a lot of inking. And so it was taking a while when I was practicing. So I thought, you know what, we'll just go ahead and get two of the layers done ahead of time. Because you've already seen the process with the two different colors. So the process is really no different other than we're doing tone on tone. And it's harder to tell what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm just working my way around wherever there's an opening on the outside edge and adding the harbor ink on here using my blending brush just getting it all in there and so if you were doing multiples of these say you wanted to make four or five or six or twenty of these I would just line up all my papers and just work them through without having to wash the stencil just keep going through until you're done all of one, you know, all of one color. And then, you know, do all layer one, done. All of layer two, done. Do an assembly line. And then there's a lot less washing of stencils in between. All right. So there's our layer three. And I'm just going to set that aside for now. I will wash it afterwards. 
And then our last one, and that one I actually did a lot darker than I did the first two. Now we're going to flip this over so we can do layer number four and just center it over the cardstock. Make sure everything kind of lines up. It's a lot of just doing it by eyeball, doing it by feel. There we go. And now we can do our last layer. So what we're doing is we're creating a tone on tone geometric type border on this layer of the card. And I think it's kind of fun that we can create our own pattern, just like we did this morning during our technique when we made pattern with our stamps. We're now just making pattern cardstock with our stencils. Super fun. And it's very subtle. You can even do this with Versamark and do heat embossing. Although I will say that when you do Versamark through a stencil, your stencil will will never exactly be the same again. Okay, the, the Versamark really has a stick to about it. So you may end up with a slightly sticky stencil for a while. <laughs> I have a couple stencils that I've done that. And I love the effect, so I'm sure I will keep doing it, even though it makes a mess of your stencil. But your stencil is still quite usable. Absolutely. So no worries about that. But, um, yeah. <laughs> It makes a fun effect doing heat embossing through. You don't do the heat embossing through the stencil. Just put the Versamark through the stencil. Uh, heat and acetate are, are not, not, not on friendly terms. So there's our inking with our harbor and our papaya. And then let me just give this a little wipe down. Because I think we are done with that. And you can put that out of the way put that over there and now we need to bring in our card base so we have um, if you buy the kits you get the card bases with it so this is a slimline card base and we're going to fold it with the bump side of the score line to the inside just make sure everything lines up and then we can crease that down like so and then we can bring in our card front that we just inked up now, you're going to see some weird little blotches in the center here where just pieces of the quadrants got inky, and that's okay because um, it's going to get hidden, <laughs> and we didn't need to do those. They're going to be covered up. So let's go ahead and attach this to our card front. Grab this. Do -do. And then this. Now, you can also, if you don't want to buy the kits and make them how they are, um, you can just purchase the bits and pieces that you like from the special, the Say It With Style special, and totally create your own cards. You know, it's not, there's no rule saying you can't do that. So there we go. Now, this card is being created on the horizontal. We're going to bring in a piece of papaya to match that papaya ink we were using. And this piece is seven and a half by two and a half. So we're going to go ahead and stick that down. Like so. And let me use this to help me along the way here. I find sometimes the piercing tool makes a nice lifter for the backing. And you're less likely. I find sometimes when I go to peel it off, I end up you know, pulling the paper and it gets that sort of, um, uh, like ruffled look, <laughs> if that makes sense. Rumpled, rumpled, I guess that's the word I want. We're just going to go ahead and center that in the middle of our card. So you can see there that we only have that, just that outside ring of the stenciling showing. So no need to stencil the whole card, that's for sure. And so then our last piece we're going to bring in is the piece that we stenciled. It's going to get layered in the middle here, but before we do that, we're going to go ahead and stamp our sentiment. And the one that we're using is from the um, You Go Girl stamp set, and we're using the You're a Whole Lot of Awesome. So I'm going to just make sure that it's seasoned, because I've only used it once, and... It's um, 
I only used it once and I washed it afterwards. <laughs> Look at me washing stamps. And then we're just going to go ahead and ink that up. Now I should have something under this. So when you get a stamp set, the foam that comes in here not only protects your stamps and cushions them and all that jazz, but you can also use it as a stamping surface. Especially handy if you've gone to a crop and you forgot to bring your Versamat. Yep, because you know we've all done it. The back side of your Versamat is the best stamping surface by far, but in a pinch this works just as well. And we're going to go ahead and center that and stamp it down. It's going to overhang onto the stencil pattern a little bit and that's fine. We're just going to give it a moment to transfer the ink. And there we go. You're a whole lot of awesome. And then we can attach that to our card front. You'll notice that this is a fairly low profile card. We're not adding any foam tape. There's no pattern paper. It's a nice simple card and I think I have now run out of adhesive on there. <laughs> Just in the nick of time. We got the card done. I'll get another roll out in a few minutes. There we go. And we can go ahead and center this on our papaya. Like that. And then the other thing that you get with the with the kits is an embellishment. And for this one, the uh, You Go Girl card making workshop kit, you get the wood grain die cut shapes. And so I'm going to use a couple of stars on this. Um, the pattern calls for either stars or the hexagons, but I kind of like the stars because, you know, it's telling us that we're awesome. So we're going to take a bigger one and a smaller one and put them on there. There's fun things on here. There's um, butterflies, there's a frame, there's a camera, bows, flowers, leaves, buttons, starbursts, arrows, all sorts of fun things. So those are the new die cut shapes in the catalog. I'm going to grab my liquid glue and my tweezers just to make my life easy. And we'll just flip that over to the back side. Go into the back side. I just realized I have not been responding to your comments for a moment or two. <laughs> oh, you were yakking on the phone, Carol. It happens. It happens. Yep. And then our little one. Just popping them on there like that. I like that it overlaps onto the stenciling. And there we go. That is our completed card created using the Say It With Style You Go Girl card making workshop kit. And um, this is project number four from that kit. We've got our um, slimline card base. Then we've added a layer of Harbor card stock that we've stenciled around the edge using that quadrant stencil, layering up with papaya and then white daisy, using the stenciling, papaya and harbor, going across the bottom, we did a little bit of masking to do that, adding in our wood grain die cuts and also our lovely stamp sentiment. Now, if you want to take this one step further and making it a little bit more zhuzhy, then you can take your slimline envelope you can mask off a little inch along the bottom and you can do the stenciling along your envelope as well to make a nice little duo and to pop in the mail and send to somebody for some happy mail because sending somebody a, your, a whole lot of awesome card seems like a beautiful happy mail. All right, hope you guys enjoyed seeing that. Uh, card come together and seeing how to use those stencils and um, with the blending brushes. And if you make something like this, take a picture of it, pop it in the comments because I would love to see it. All right. Have a wonderful rest of the afternoon and we will be back on 
at 7 o'clock on Zoom for Chat and Craft. I will post the link just before 7. All right, thanks. See you, see you soon. Toodaloo. Bye.